Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. Today we are going to decode the Nobel winning work of Carrico and Wiseman. What was the work and what faced them Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2023. So let's dig in and try to understand the work that paved the path of developing effective vaccines against the SARS-CoV-2. So let's start talking about it. Before I'm going and discussing about this, there are interesting stories about it. But I'm not going to talk about the stories in detail. I'm going to give you an insight of what exact work that they did. Because probably you've heard that there's a simple nucleotide modification work that they did with the mRNA. Or due to this modification to the nucleotide, uh, we are able to generate a better or much effective uh, mRNA vaccine. Now, why we need to produce an mRNA vaccine? And when did it all begin? You may think like this is related to COVID, so might be related to 2019, 20, 21 that time. But in reality, their work started far back at 2005. That was the timeline. This is one important timeline when they start working. Then there is a paper published in 2008 when they joined another work in 2010. And at that time, this 2008 and 10 is the time frame where uh, they are working. Actually, <clears throat> they are working for... A new startup out there, uh, the name of which is Moderna. Remember that. And what they did is that there is a startup called Moderna who is producing RNA vaccines and vaccines, particularly against different viruses, particularly the RNA virus. Now, at that moment, when they're doing this research from 2005 to 2008, what they found out is that because here there are two individuals, Carico and Wiseman, uh, the Carico from the PhD in biochemistry, Wiseman from uh, the immunology background, and they have the postdoctoral fellow, all of them teamed up to understand this idea of developing developing mRNA vaccine, remember that. And uh, to produce mRNA vaccine, what they did is that they need to have uh, different trial and error processes to understand if we inject mRNA in human body, how the body is going to react against it. Right? So mRNA, the working with mRNA is very difficult because mRNA is very unstable. It's very unstable and we all know that. Like those who are working with RNA right now or watching this video, you know that uh, the RNA biology labs, they publish papers less often than any other lab out there because their work is related to so much contamination and also un the unstability of the mRNA has very precautious, uh, like they need to take very much precaution in order to to continue with their research. So what they did is the mRNA vaccine. So they are working with uh, the mRNA in vitro. So they are producing the uh, the production of mRNA outside of the body, they designed it and insert it uh, inside the human body. So how exactly they are going to deliver mRNA, their research in, in uh, simple glances that they are going to take this mRNA which is a synthetic, remember, a synthetic RNA, not uh, the organic one, it's a synthetic RNA produced outside of the human body and they use a cation, cationic lipids. So try to understand the situation. The mRNA, in reality, what it has, single-stranded uh, structures like this. The backbone, this is negative charge. And the cationic lipids that they are going to use, the cationic lipids are going to shield them because cationic lipids, they have positive charge. So with the help of cationic lipids, they can deliver the mRNA inside the host, let's say inside the human. So they started this uh, in the mice models uh, earlier. So try to see the response. Now when they try to see the response, for many years, they are ending up in failure. In fact, the failure is so much. Actually, uh, uh, Professor Carrico was actually downgraded from a uh, teaching position to, again, uh, the research grade po position to a research associate position at that moment when they are not finding a suitable result. And what happening is that is although they try to insert it into the mice body or the body of the mice. So what happened? The mice's immune response is going to go up against this uh, mRNA, synthetic mRNA. And particularly the toll-like receptor 3, TLR3 of our immune system. That is going to detect it and it's going to impact uh, further immune system cells by producing pro-inflammatory cytokines, particularly interleukin-1 here. So release of interleukin-1, which is a pro-inflammatory cytokines, remember, this causes all the time, they're inserting the synthetic RNA and it's producing a huge havoc of immune response, which is going to destabilize the mRNA, degrade it, and whole process is in vain. So this, this failure was repeated and until they reach a point when they decided this idea, now why we're using mRNA? Because whenever we talk about uh, working with an RNA, we always in like uh, we always find this like mRNA is something that pops up in our mind. But why mRNA? 
so they try to search for other variants of rna they found out that there is a simple rna called trna if you recall right we biologists give much more importance to mrna that's true like we read about mrna we read about transcription uh, secondary uh, structure formation even in the rna interference we deal with uh, mrna but now they look into the trna they found out that normally 25% of the trna bases are chemically modified they are they are modified bases right if you recall the trna structures you know there are secondary structures in the trna there are tcic loop there are anticodon loops there are different loop structures formed and those structures those 25% of the whole trna is modified forms and trna is pretty stable inside the cell so what we can do to increase the stability of our synthetic mrna and so that the immune system response is not that effective against it there are two challenges one to make mrna more stable two to prevent the immune response against that mrna and to achieve that they are trying to modify the synthetic mrna bases and the easiest modification that they found here is modifying the uracil of rna into pseudo uracil so uracil is now modified to pseudo uracil pseudo uracil this small modification leads to the ground breaking discovery that fetched them novel now this simple you know that that make me fascinated about uh, this biological discoveries you know because maximum the bigger even biggest discoveries in this world they came from a simple solution which is just right in front of you and the trna was standing right in front of us laughing at us stating that see there is a simple base modification can lead to so much changes it will solve all your problem because it will give you more stability so they know they knew this that it's going to increase the stability of the mrna anyhow beforehand when they start design the experiment but they have this question remain will that solve the second question the response by our immune system now when they introduced this modified base carrying synthetic mrna with again same cationic lipid treatment inside the mice the result was shocking ground breaking it broke everything because at that moment not only it gave more stability to the mrna but also the tlr fails to recognize the mrna as a foreign component so this pseudo uracil helps them to mask the foreign origin both together give them this idea that the mrna can stay and this mrna can be utilized to generate an immune response which is not that dangerous that can kill their organism but enough to produce a sufficient immune response by introducing that mrna so we want that immune response we don't want the immune response to be so much adverse to kill the organism that's what they achieve and once they achieve this then they utilize the same technique the synthetic mrna instead of that we know uh, in sars cov2 we have that mrna virus we have that the sequence and we utilize that but modifying the single nucleotide base that is uracil and why we modified uracil because we have a problem with u the problem with rna not with the dna component not with dntps with rntps and multiple variants used at the time so this is the lab that was doing all this job and they selected this and this particular modification leads to stability as well as the protection uh, against the hyperimmune response by the tlr3 detection and pro inflammatory cytokine release by uh, like il1 release now similarly at the time there is another parallel timeline working in the germany and they they were working with modification of the bases and they they did modifications of the bases as well and they did modification to the 2 hydroxyl so they modified to methoxy so hydroxyl is modified to methoxy that modification also solved the purpose and that is the work of biontech remember you probably heard these names moderna working out and biontech working the separate so they are se they are working the separate zone but moderna has did this before because they have started long ago they cracked the code and once they cracked the code at that timeline even before corona came they start introducing this plan to make uh 
different vaccines against RNA viruses. They did this earlier. Now, at the time of COVID-19, the same method is utilized to generate vaccines, which is much effective. And we can generate this vaccine in the fastest time scale possible, even before uh, the different science fiction movies showed us that we can produce vaccines. We prepared vaccines even faster with the known technique that we have in place. That's why kudos to the researchers, I salute their struggle and their hard work to did this for humankind. So this is a much deserved Nobel Prize in Medicine 2023. I believe you understood the gist of it. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.